As Anambra gears towards their November 6 polls, the Accord Party is advising the electorate to vote wisely. Candidate for Accord Party in the November 6 governorship polls, Godwin Maduka, says this while receiving members of the Anambra grassroots movement at the party's campaign rally in Okija, Ihiala, local government area of Anambra state. And he's urging the people of the state to take advantage of the ongoing voter registration exercise to be fully armed for the elections. You should check the current situation of the state as it concerns you. I'm advising the electorate to vote wisely. Check the credibility of the various candidates vying for government. And of course, uh, Godwin Maduka, governorship candidate for the uh, court party for the Anambra governorship election, joins us now. It's good to have you with us. How would you describe Anambra's uh, current political landscape, especially among the leading contenders and, of course, their parties as well? Well, I mean, uh, everybody is, uh, every party is trying to produce a candidate. Uh, but the three major parties we have in Anambra State uh, seem to have issues. Uh, as you know, I'm part of uh, we're part of PDP, and uh, the uh, what happened on that day resulted in most of all the campaign because they were doing selection instead of election. I think they have issue in AP, APC. There's no election for APC. There are no primary election in APC. And somebody wrote his own um, candidacy. And then you go to uh, 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 Apuga. We have a lawsuit all over. And the chairman that produced uh, one of the major candidates uh, have been uh, removed, which will make the candidacy of that individual Questionable. Now I joined the Accord Party. Accord have very good uh, uniform um, uh, operation. There don't seem to be a lot of problem with Accord. And is number one uh, is number one uh, party on the ballot paper. So I'm very happy to be the flag bearer of Accord. And of all the parties, we seem to be the one that everybody is watching now. And we hope on November 6 that I will emerge as the governor of Anambra State. Uh, so let's talk about your recent uh, ward tour. Uh, can you tell us, you know, how people are responding uh, under your accord party? You see, uh, of course, they're responding very well. In this time of uh, social media, uh, it's easy for people to see what is happening. I mean, the world tour is going very well, and people are responding, people are coming out. Uh, I used to tell people that during the primary election under PDP, it was almost like I was doing a general election instead of primary. So it's a, a basically a continuation of what I have done, reaching the gra grassroots. They know what I have done in this state, and they want me to be their governor. Because if you look at my shirt, it's called evidence. Evidence. There's no other candidate in here in Anambra that have done whatever I have done. Nobody. I'm going to continue where I have ended in my philanthropy and continue to do what I do best reaching out to the people, improving people's life in every se uh, sector of life. So to answer your question, it is going very well. And now people realizing that it's going to be difficult for any of them other candidates to beat me. Oh, very good. Now, in a related scenario, uh, much depends on a number of people's uh, participation uh, for the polls. How would you assess the public's appetite uh, for the elections. Now, beyond the issue of a court, uh, from a general point of view. Well, the general public, if I understand your question right, they are ready for a change. 
they really want a change. I am not a conventional politician. Most of us got into politics out of frustration of things that should be done that are not being done. So a number of people already, they have a lot of voter registration going on everywhere. They are not going to repeat the same mistakes they have done over the years. They have to see every one of us with our own report card. Coming into the election, you have to have a report card of what you've done, what makes you to be a good governor. I keep telling a number of people uh, that, tell us what you've done. So we can see what you're going to do when you become the governor. I have done the work of a governor for the past 30 years in terms of the capacity of what I have done. And there has never been any governor in this state that have done the kind of things I have done in this state prior to becoming a governor. So we can really see that upon becoming the governor of Anambra State, I'm going to bring it to a, a, a different level and a greater level than it has been. So the people of Anambra are wired up and they're behind me 100%. Okay, so let's talk about your career and your profession, because you are a, a, a medical doctor. How do you intend to sort of restructure the health sector uh, when you become, or if you become governor? Okay, I'm a chemist, I'm a pharmacist, I'm a medical doctor, I'm an entrepreneur, I run business in America, I'm also an educator, I'm a triple professor. So with all this, I will be able to use them to help my state. Now, my business is going on in America. The hospitals I own are being taken care of. So I don't have to worry about that. Now, when I become a governor, I will be able to uh, uh, take advantage of being a pharmacist and a medical doctor to change the medical practice here in Anambra State and in Nigeria. I've told them that I build about 21 emergency rooms across 21 local government. I'm also building the finishing up a medical research and uh, a tertiary hospital here in Anambra, which is 17 floors tall. The tallest building in Igbo land, south to south and southeast. The tallest medical research building in the whole of Africa. So I have big ideas to change the life of our people. So becoming a governor wouldn't be, a, it was just a title for me, but I will be doing what I have been doing both overseas and here in Nigeria. Very good, uh, Dr. Maduka. Now, there were moments of uh, drama uh, during electioneering campaigns in Anambra uh, leading up to, to the November 6th elections. Court cases involving uh, PDP's uh, Valentine Ozigbo and even issues uh, with uh, primaries involving the leading parties as well. Now, in this regard, do you think this is a normal uh, development when it comes to politics in Nigeria or is this is just uh, peculiar to Anambra? Well, I don't think it's peculiar to Anambra. But Anambra, Anambra own is always at a, a higher level. Um, you know, I tell people that my emergence as a, a governor candidate have a divine mandate. All those people in all the parties, really, I tell them, why are you even vying for the governorship? Tell us what you have done that make you want to be a governor. Okay, so whatever happening to their parties showed that God wants a real uh, and the, uh, the person that can change an umbrella to a match. Okay, who would ever know that today that uh, APC will be having a problem where there is no primary and somebody show up as a candidate? Do they think we're blind? Who would ever know that the PDP where I was winning the primary, 80%, and 
and then on the last day, they changed it to give it to who they want. But God doesn't work that way. Who would ever know that Apuga, who owned Anambra State, today is in disarray? Okay? So all those three parties now will realize they cannot produce a governor that will help the state. Because you govern as you campaign. You govern as your party uh, slogan or party uh, constitution. And none of these three parties can produce the governor of Anambra State that will do something for the masses. So to answer that question, it's not peculiar to Anambra. But the, the disarray uh, that we have in these uh, uh, parties at a higher level than any other state. But a lot of us are coming to join the uh, government. Nigerians in diaspora are tired. They're tired. We cannot keep picking people from within, and they do the same thing over and over. We need the people that really want to come and govern and help people instead of pocketing, uh, putting stuff in their pocket and their family and their friends, and the masses are dying. Thank right. you. Okay, so I want to pick up on one of the things that you mentioned earlier. You talked about evidence earlier, uh, which you have emblazoned on 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 your on the top that you're wearing at the moment. And you also talked about you know um, having done a lot of things for 30 years uh, in Anambra State. And you talked about philanthropy and also reaching out to the people. But I want to ask: Is that what the governorship role is about? Reaching out to the people and engaging in philanthropic efforts? Because from what I know, the governorship. Uh, role is an administrative one. I want to pick up on one of the things that you mentioned earlier. Uh, the level of mass philanthropy, if you don't have administrative mind, you cannot push it. You understand? You still have to get people uh, to do different things. My philanthropy is the same as the gover uh, uh, governance. To the level of my philanthropy, is actually bigger than the level, the level of a governor uh, in terms of administration. Because my philanthropy uh, takes care of every aspect of life. My philanthropy is in the church, is in the communities. My philanthropy goes into road construction, bridge, building homes, social welfare, making sure that the elderly and the disabled and the poor people are being taken care of. My philanthropy is a mirror image of governance. For example, I have said, in the area of uh, education, I have given scholarships, I have built, church, uh, I have built uh, schools. In the area of health, which I'm going to continue. I build hospitals, and I'm building the tallest medical research in Nigeria. In the area of tolerance, religious tolerance, I have built churches for Anglican and Catholic and whoever needed it. In the area of women and youth empowerment, I train youth all over the world. I produce doctors, lawyers, engineers all over. And the women, I've empowered them in terms of housing and making sure people have roof over their head. You know, I built many homes for widows, poor folks, that if you come into my town, there's no single touch house in that place. And I built all over, both in Abia and some in Imo, as well as I number and some one of you in Enugu State. In the area of pharmaceutical industry, everybody knows I'm a pharmacist. I built something that is making sure that we don't have fraudulent medications. So uh, you ask me, it does philanthropy uh, qualifies you for the governor? Yes, it qualifies me because philanthropy is the same as governance. 
if it's administered well. I've been doing this with my own money. You can imagine what I'm going to do when I get extra help from the government. And also told everybody in Anambra State, we're not going to be dependent on Abuja only. I'm coming home with a, a foreign investment. Of everybody running, none of them can do what I'm going to do. Because I've been a business, businessman in America, businessman here in Nigeria. So, upon becoming the governor, I continue what I do. The only different things at, at this point is I bring some capable hands, people that will help me run the government and make sure there's no loopholes. We use the money that we get to help the people of Anambra State. Uh, at the end of four years, we will be the most literate, literate state in the whole of Nigeria. All right, Dr. Maduka, uh, earlier on you alluded to the fact that uh, ABGA has a strong footing in Anambra over time and, uh, of course, uh, followed by PDP as well. And, of course, um, your party accord is still basically at its infancy in the state. So, realistically, what do you think are your chances uh, in the November 6th elections? Uh, you've already uh, given us uh, your achievements uh, so far, but do you think that is enough uh, to spur the people uh, to vote for accord? Uh, thank you for that question. Something else is happening in Anambra State today. They are no more voting for the party. They are voting for individuals. They don't have any more. They don't have any trust on party structures because they see it as a joke. So I can take a, a Blue Moon Party. I will still win. I can take any party, I will see with because now they are concentrating on individuals, a number of people are not concentrating on parties anymore. So it doesn't really matter what party any one of us take, they will follow us to that uh, election day polling units with whichever party we pick up. I am 100% sure that this is what is going on in Anambra now. Apuga have been here, PDP have been here, APC had been here. Where did they get us? Where did they get us? Our people are dying. Anambra used to be the leader, the light of the nation is going back. Frankly, everybody decamping every day from Apuga, from APC, from PDP to Accord. Most of them didn't change their uh, party affiliation, they just want to vote for me using their code. So it doesn't matter what party I pick up, they're not blind, they know what is going on. And you know what, up to this moment, I'm not, nobody's funding my campaign. I wish somebody were doing that, but I'm funding my own campaign. And they see that. So I'm calling on all the way meaning of Anambra State. Anybody that want to get involved, this is the time to get involved. Let's make a movement, not party affiliation. So the answer is they're voting for the candidates, not for the party. All right, it doesn't then. matter how long the party has been here. All right. All right, it's been uh, wonderful Thank speaking you. to you, uh, Dr. Godwin Madoka, governorship candidate of Accord Party uh, for Anambra State. Many thanks for uh, your time. <laughs>